So, Ben, you start us off um, challenging the fundamental premise of the report. Congratulations. Uh, it's a good place to start. Uh, maybe it's actually wake up and think about what the report says. And so I guess I'd kind of like to get at this question of how important boards really are. There's been a lot of discussion about boards. There's been changes because of the uh, more emphasis placed on independent directors and other changes in terms of the um, management of boards themselves. Are, are we focused on boards because, in fact, there aren't enough Jeff Immelt? <coughs> is, that, is that what's going on? Or are we focused on them, in fact, because, as John has put forward, they have a unique ability to mediate and are really the only ones who can? I agree with John. I would just say that the fundamental functions of the board have not change. You have to define what the CEO should do, and I don't think the definition has been right. It hasn't had the right balance between performance and integrity and risk-taking and risk management. You've got to choose the person who actually meets the spec, and you have to compensate them. Those are fundamental board functions. They have been forever. I think the boards have lost sight of what is the proper role of the CEO. How to? We, there's no question that compensation is badly broken, um, and I don't think we're training and choosing the right kind of people. So I think the board still has the most fundamental set of issues. I don't think it can go into the kind of detail on these societal issues by itself. If it doesn't have the right leadership, it will not happen. These are hard questions. I ran public affairs for GE. I covered 150 issues around the globe. It was an enormously difficult task. Um, Washington, Berlin, um, <coughs> uh, Beijing. Um, I think you, the, the board can set a direction, but if you don't have the right management, this stuff will not happen. And so I think we just have to go back to basics as to what the board has, should do and hasn't done. But I would focus on those three things of defining, compensating, and choosing more than I would sort of trying to decide, you know, what the right approach is to climate change or even what the right issues are. Um, they, can tr they can challenge the CEO, but the CEO, we've got to change the view and not have it be that the board is always directing the CEO. They work together, and the CEO is the one who really is going to make it happen, in my judgment, both in terms of conceptualizing and implementing. So what are the leverage points here? If the goal, in fact, is to have them you know, reestablish a, a clear role here and better definition, what are the leverage points from those of us that sit outside of business institutions and feel that boards are not, are not moving quickly enough here? What, where where well, would you start? I, I, I don't want to I don't defer to my fellow panelists, but I really do think we haven't defined the job right. Pay is a mess. I mean, look what happened in the financial sector. Financial sector was the rocket fuel that sent the challenger up into the stratosphere where it blew up. Um, so we, I think we should not make the board more complicated than it is. It's got to do some fundamental things, and I think we have to redefine those fundamental things and make sure they do those things right, and all, many other good things will follow. Uh, Judy, I would argue that, um, well, first of all, I do agree with what Ben said. It's the CEO who must run the company. But it's the job of the board of directors. They are, after all, the elected representatives of the <coughs> shareholders. And there's some meaning to that. It is up to them to review what the key questions are that are being asked by the constituencies who contribute to the corporation. And then to make sure that they have answers to those questions. Executive comp is a very, very good example of how we're kind of circling around this issue and not doing a very good job answering it. The SEC uh, de developed a whole array of extra disclosure supposedly to answer the question that shareholders and others ask about CEO comp. But the, the core questions are not being asked or answered. The core questions about executive compensation really relate to strategy of, of the business and the ways in which the compensation plan incentivizes the senior management of the company to perform over the long term. The questions that shareholders really ask about a company and its comp plan are forward-looking. But the SEC's disclosure mandate is all about justifying last year's decisions. The um, TIA CREF, while I was here, issued a set of 10 questions that should be answered in the CDNA, the compensation discussion and analysis. And all of those questions relate 
to the links between the compensation decisions of the company and its performance and its strategy to achieve good performance over the long term. The companies, I think, would like to answer those questions, but the legal framework sometimes makes it very difficult to do so. But it's ultimately up to the board of directors to make sure that they have the answers and can then articulate to the various audiences of the corporation how those interests <coughs> are being looked after and how the corporation is de doing a good job. And the more we think about that responsibility of the board, not in terms of legal compliance, which is what everybody talks about right now, but in terms of communication, not disclosure, but communication of explaining the business. And the more that we demand that directors really know the business that they're overseeing and uh, to know how the company actually makes money, uh, not a sort of standardized view of the job of a director that can be <laughs> applied down at any, in any company. The more we start thinking in terms of specific businesses, the more directors are going to be able to do their job. But it is more demanding. Let me put one other question out, and then we're going to open it up. Um, and I'm interested in, in your thoughts on this, Peter, and others. Has anything really changed on boards in, since Enron? Since Starbucks, I mean, are we seeing is the culture fundamental question of the culture of boards and their ability to actually say, "I don't understand the business," perhaps, or I don't. I don't think you're going to get a whole lot of those questions. Okay, but just um, yes, uh, there has been a tremendous fundamental change in boards since the Sarbanes Oxley, Enron, WorldCom, Adelphia, you name them, uh, implosions of, of 2002. Um, I think, one, the commitment of directors has changed dramatically, the time commitment specifically. Um, we're, our surveys are showing 215 to 220 hours per, per board per year um, uh, of activity that directors are putting in. Um, and I think that's changed the makeup of the boards as well. I think we're seeing uh, one fewer CEOs sitting on boards, or sitting CEOs, I should say, sitting on boards, principally because they don't have the time. Um, we just went through the, the financial crisis and we saw a report, I think Joanne Lublin put it together at the Wall Street Journal, talking about um, CEOs sitting on boards that are in crisis and having to step off because they can't manage their own company while trying to steer the company, the, the board seat that they're sitting on, sitting on that company, they can't steer them through that crisis because of the time commitment. I, I go back, you know, all the way back uh, several years ago to a board that was in crisis that met 52 times. Well, that's once a week um, during the year to try to steer this company out of crisis. That's a tremendous time commitment. I think we're seeing more and more education, which is one of the things that NACD does. Um, you know, we do both the public education, we do the in boardroom education, we do webinars. Uh, we had a webinar uh, at the beginning of the year that had 1,100 people on it for an hour to talk about audit and risk. Um, we do these monthly, and we're getting hundreds and hundreds of people, directors, participating in these things. So I think the idea, and this goes to one of the things that Ben was talking about, um, one, you got to remember, yes, they're there typically eight to ten times a year. Uh, directors are in the room to talk about this. They are not managing the company. They are providing advice to the managers of the company itself. I think Ben is dead on in terms of finding the right CEO. Many people say that is the job of the board of directors, is to find the right appropriate candidate. And, and the second piece of that, which goes along with executive compensation, is developing the internal talent um, within the organization so that you don't have to go out and recruit the rock star from outside the company. And you can have somebody that's got a long history with the company and that you can pay a fair wage and not have to spend, you know, $30 million to recruit them in from an outside company. So uh, I think dramatic changes have happened in the boardroom. I think there are still dramatic changes that have to happen in the board, boardroom as we go forward through this crisis. But I, I think directors are, you know, I always used to say after Enron and WorldCom, the silver lining in that cloud that was those, those two companies and the situation was in is that directors are taking this a lot more seriously. This is a job now. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of commitment, and to John's point, I think we're gonna start seeing fewer directors sitting on multiple boards and focusing more in on one or two boards where they can have a direct impact. 